Now, for the woman of the hour, Corinne Olson is an award-winning attorney who has settled multiple cases in the multi-million dollar range. Ranked in the top 1% of America's most honored professionals, she now works with entrepreneurs, authors, small businesses, and thought leaders to help them be seen, claim who they are, leverage their authority, and build deep connection. Corinne works with people who refuse to settle for lackluster results old ideas that don't work, and paradigms that haven't shifted. She provides innovative ways to get their passions out into the world so that people can spend more time rising to their infinite potential and less time trying to get there. Corinne, are you ready to rock this? I sure am. Thanks, Chris. Awesome, awesome. Well, you are now live on Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your time and wisdom with us today. We appreciate you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Absolutely. We're going to have a blast today. And speaking of paradigms, as I saw in your intro, today's theme is patterns and paradigms. So for you, how has this concept of patterns and as as life goes on, we start to notice more patterns. We have self-awareness and then paradigms, which is the collective of patterns and collective of beliefs. How has that shaped your reality? I think that there's a number of ways that shape my reality. Mm. One of them is um, a lot of us don't own what's happening in our lives and particularly in the law. You see a lot Mm. of that on both sides of the the spectrum. Yeah. Um, And when you can take ownership for what's happening, including Mm. anything in your business, your life, your relationships, it changes everything. And Mm. I, I think the other thing And I've heard you talk more about this on other podcasts you've given, the difference between what you want Mm. and what you're willing to do. And so when you put the two of those together, taking ownership and looking at what you want and what you're willing to do, I think it's a huge paradigm shift in every single area. Wow. So beautiful. I love how we're already diving deep into this. And and it's so true because when you are committed to shifting and up leveling and getting to your dreams and results, you'll be more willing to to get uncomfortable, to go outside the normal patterns, the comfortable, the routine, the rut that a lot of people get into or that like the hamster wheel, get off the hamster wheel and start exploring new places, new regions, new areas, new environments, new ways of being and thinking. So I think that is one hundred percent spot on thank you you're welcome you're welcome so we're gonna keep diving into this and have a lot of fun on this journey but why don't you just share a little bit more about your what you're working on today and then we'll dive into the journey in just a few minutes so there's uh for me a number of things that i'm working on primarily helping people get their lead magnets up okay um and also to work on their reputation management so Mm. Um, I'm leveraging the two of those together. A lot of people don't realize that 76% of consumers make decisions about a business or an individual based on their reputation management. Mm. And as you started the introduction for me on the podcast, reputation has been huge for me as an attorney. Um, It's Mm. how I've been able to get the awards that I've been able to receive. But what often happens with people in their reputation is they either don't own it, Mm. they're not willing to do something about it, or they don't actually realize both how important it is and how they can leverage it. And when I couple that with lead magnets, with a system that helps people um, utilize the reviews that they have, but even ask their clients for the reviews and provide free lead magnets, not one in exchange for an email address, but just something out there, it also can shift a paradigm. It's a different pattern than what most people are used to. um, And it takes really a, a big sense of ownership and what people are saying about you and how you show up. Yeah. Wow. That's beautiful. So it's, it's the perspective of the customer, the client of a business or a person that ultimately will determine whether or not they buy. It's, it's the, it's the perception, it's the reputation, it's what they hear. It's that word of mouth that we always hear about. And what you help people to do is leverage that and manage that reputation so that they're better able to attract and, and, keep customers and clients. Absolutely. And also take it a step further. So Mm -hmm. you talk a lot about how to up level where you're at and not stay stuck somewhere. Yeah. It's the same thing. Like if you look at iTunes, how many people leave positive reviews? 
Mm. And how many podcasters don't go and interact with the people leaving positive reviews? Mm. How many sort of uh, wait, like you actively ask for them. That's a really uh, owner uh, kind of procedure. It's a pattern that you have. A lot of people don't, but it's also taking it a step further, whether it's Yelp or Google or iTunes or Stitcher, wherever it is. Mm. Will people take the extra step to reach out? Because you've already seen, if you're getting a review and it's positive, you've got a raving fan there. Mm. Go connect. Mm. And if it's unfortunate you're not getting one or you're getting a four star and you want a five star, reach out, listen, mm. be willing to hear what that person is and own that you have an opportunity to make a decision. Do you want to change it or do mm. you not? Either way is okay, no judgment but own where you're going and be willing to take the steps to put yourself in a higher level if that's what you're looking to do. Wow. So amazing. So amazing. So let's, let's go back in the journey. Cause we want to know how did, how did you get to where we are today coming from a background of law? Like that just seems like the biggest <laughs> leap, <laughs> but Hey, it's perfect. How it all unfolds is perfect. So Karin, why don't you share a little bit more about that and how it all unfolded? Um, I think that when you look at patterns, um, and I know you've talked about this before too, there's the patterns we're intentional about and the patterns that sort of just happen. Mm. One of the huge things is what do you do with it once you realize that either was intentional or not? Mm. So my journey actually started before law. I wanted to be an orchestra conductor. Wow. And so um, I did work to do that. And um, I realized pretty quickly on, I, I got some lessons with Schulte and Margaret Hillis at the Chicago Symphony, and they said, no woman is going to lead a major orchestra as the main conductor during your lifetime. So if you're wanting that, it's not happening. You're not going to shift that paradigm. Wow. And so through a course of events, I uh, got a master's degree trying to, still in a very youthful place, overcome the odds. Mm -hmm. And then I saw that the, the uh, climb up would involve watching people at more minor orchestras. And I did some of that, watching them read newspapers while someone was conducting, including Margaret Hillis, who was the top choral conductor of the Chicago Symphony. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, if that's what's going on with people who didn't make the Chicago Symphony, if they're mm -hmm. reading a newspaper, I'm not going to be okay with it. Mm -hmm. And I ended up taking a course on law. And then I headed into the law. And so um, one of the things happened is that I obviously had some interest in creativity early on. And in the law, there is creativity, but it's much more intellectual. Mm. Um, there's an ability to put together evidence, but as many people don't realize, mm. both sides have the exact same evidence going into a trial. So mm. it's not actually about who's got the best evidence. It's about who can craft the best story with the evidence that there is. Wow. And so the aspect of storytelling for me and, and constant research, I did a lot of medical malpractice work and so I was always learning something and I love that. The trouble with it, of course, is it's a blame and shame game, which I was, despite able to settle more than 95% of my cases, I had a really high settle rate wow. because I could tell a story that would get people to say, hey, wait, we're not going to trial. Mm. Um, the problem still is it's a blame and shame game. And the other difficulty is, especially with medical malpractice cases, I could only do about 10 large cases at a time. Mm -hmm. And so what I realized is I could impact a much greater audience if I went into something else. I did all kinds of research on what that something else could be. And I fell in love with the entrepreneurial journey and mm -hmm. how you can touch masses and really mm -hmm. effectuate paradigm shifts for people in that realm. Yeah, that's that's one thing I'm just so grateful for. Everyone who's alive right now is a part of a time where we can reach the entire world with with our message, with our information, with what whatever it is, whatever gift. We can reach the entire world with anything if we simply put together the process, put together the team, put together the system. Anything can be done because of this thing called the internet. It's so amazing, such a leveraged time to be living in. You were talking about leveraging our reputation. You know, that's something that when when the wind picks it up, whether it's good or, or bad, you know, when the internet picks it up, it spreads like wildfire. <laughs> Absolutely. And the ability to connect with people that previously mm. we'd never be able to connect with. Yeah. 
is just huge. Like you don't have to be able to afford to travel somewhere else. You can just get online and, and connect. And yeah. that also means you can connect with a lot of different ideas that you otherwise wouldn't be exposed to. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. I know one of the, the big models that's been successful for businesses is the webinar model. And you can have a webinar that runs like every two hours. So someone gets to the page or every whatever, whatever amount of time someone lands on a page. Oh, the next one's starting in five minutes, 10 minutes, you know, so it's like people can sign up and have the experience of being with you in a pre-recorded webinar or an, or a live one, but most of the time it's pre pre-recorded in this kind of a scenario, and be able to to have an experience with you, almost like they're talking to you, almost like they're in the same room as you, um, while you're giving this information to them. So it's it's just such an amazing amazing time to be alive. <laughs> it is, and the other thing too is I think we're going to start seeing a lot more people using webinars yeah. to provide some foundational education or over. Mm. Coming objections so they can leverage the educational moments they have and focus their time on their other gifts that they're really wanting to deliver so mm. it's a great opportunity for education it's a great opportunity for getting people enrolled in the process and and seeing how they can be part of a tribe before they actually you know mm. plunk down the first hour yeah, I love it. And we're, we're going to be talking all day today about connection. So we're definitely going to get into that. And I do, since we're on the topic, um, what does it take to, to connect with people in a, in a more of a webinar automated or online world? Like, where do we start doing that? How do we, how do we start connecting with people in such a, you know, it's seemingly disconnected and and um, not intimate place because the internet has the challenge of feeling like, well, it's just kind of shallow, it's surface level because we're not in person feeling each other's energy. How do you how do you think about that? I think that it's a really great question and a mm. problem for some people, but the reason why it's a problem is they look at it like it's business, and it mm. is but it's not only business. It has to be connection first. So wherever mm. you're showing up, whether it's a website, a Facebook page, speaking from stage, wherever you're at, mm -hmm. think ahead about where you want people to go. And usually it's further connection. So what mm. ends up happening is a lot of people act like, you know, this is my website or this is my speech or this is my Facebook page. And they don't give us anything next to mm. go to unless they do a lead magnet with an exchange of an email. And so I'm a really big advocate. Yes, have those absolutely definitely needed, but also have lead magnets that you don't connect to any bargain for exchange. Have mm. lead magnets where you just give somebody something that actually serves. Because if you ever go somewhere and you get a gift, you get a party favor or anything like that, you walk away feeling really happy about it. Right. You, you experience it as a gift. But when you give your email, then it's like, oh, and I'm going to get all this other stuff. It yeah. takes all of the joy out of it. And what you want mm. is to connect with people in a way that they want to come back over to whatever your home is, another speech, another glance at your website, another look at your Facebook page, whatever it is. If you had somebody over to your house, you wouldn't say, hey, you can sit down, but only after you give me five compliments about myself. Or, oh, I'll get you something to drink. But only if you bring something over for me, you would just say, hey, sit down. Can I get you something to drink? <laughs> Leaf magnets can be your equivalent of that. You know, mm. sure, have some so that you collect your email addresses. Uh, do it right with the new GDPR. Mm -hmm. um, have them, but also just give some stuff away for free. Build connection first. The more you're about connection first, including a snippet of your story, which is another thing, like a lot of people do checklists or toolkits or resource lists, but they forget to put anything about them in it. Mm. And so it's great. It's a really good thing to help somebody, you know, uh, not have to sift through all of the information on the Internet. Right. But if you're not including something about you in it, you've missed an opportunity for us really to connect. You've just given me information. Wow. What, what, do, you th what do you say about the people who, like, skip the – the connection aspect and just want to get to the, to the information, so to speak. I think that um, there's uh, people like that on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, and one, ask yourself, is that who you really want to connect with? Mm. So that's just first out there as, as a, a business owner, a thought leader, is that your tribe? Mm. And if you're a 
customer or a client and someone does that, is that who you want to connect with? Mm. Um, and so for some people it's, yes, it's very transactional and mm. that's what they're wanting, get in and get out. And for other people, no. And I think we're going to see um, in 2018 and heading into 2019, there's going to be far more people where the answer is no. Mm -hmm. um, you're already seeing with millennials and also at the other spectrum, people 50 and older, they want to believe in what the person stands for. They want mm -hmm. a mission that they can sign up for or causes that they believe in or they want to see that when they give money, it's going to something that they believe in. And the only way you do that is through connection and sharing who you are. So mm. um, I, I think you're going to see a lot more demand for mm. connection. Um, and, and people want to belong. And in order to belong, they need to know what they're belonging to. Mm. So I think I think we're kind of getting to more of the the thesis or the the center point, which the foundation. I want to want to get to the foundation because we kind of just dove into you know online connection and and webinars and all that cool stuff. So I want to give it back to you, uh, Karin, and, and find out where do we want to start with this paradigm of connection? Where are people? Where might people? be going astray or not focusing on connection, maybe more focused on the transactional. And then how do we get back into the paradigm of connection and, and really building relationships and serving people to people kind of thing? Great. Great question. Um, I think one thing is start with the end in mind. Hmm. If you had the um, best connection, best opportunity, best everything you could think, what is it you're looking to do? I bet it's not have a transaction. I bet most people forget along the way that what they want is whether it's a mastermind or a tribe, they want people who believe the same things that they believe or um, complement it in some way that are heading in the same direction. And so if you know that's what you want, why would you ever settle for transactions along the way? It mm. guarantees that you're not investing in the relationship it guarantees you're not actually making real connection and so if that is true if that's the end in mind you want like-minded people or people who align with who you are and what you offer um, then you have to be willing to actually really connect and <laughs> one way to do that of course is through being authentic mm -hmm. and vulnerable and i think a lot of people uh, struggle with that especially in the beginning and trying to create a business that they're looking at how can they become profitable first yeah, yeah. instead of who am I and who am I going to be in this role as a business owner or thought leader or podcaster or whatever it is. Right. And when we can be authentic and uh, vulnerable by not just uh, the guru model, it, it used to be people really wanted the expert or the guru, you know, just like tell me where I need to go and I'll do it. And then it, of people going into wanting more of a guide mm. they want the steps for how to get there but they don't want to go it alone they want someone to go with them and now we're starting to head into a paradigm where people want more like a friend um mm. someone yes. who will roll up their sleeves yes. and do it with them <laughs> but in order to do that you have to be vulnerable to say you know yes i know how to do this but hey i'm still struggling with this other thing and along the way, I know what it's like to be you because actually I did these things too. And mm -hmm. as a friend, I want to prevent you from having to go through those hassles because I'll just share with you what I did. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a lot more of what we're heading and it's a lot deeper connection, but it requires authenticity and vulnerability to get there. Yeah. What? What? So you mentioned that people are focused on the profit in the business first and what really must be focused on is who am I and what's the end result that I'm looking for or committed to and, and going for. And then the solution that I'm going to bring to the, to the table or our listeners are going to bring to the table as a product service, whatever it might be, the people who are going to be buying it as time moves forward are more and more. They want a friend. They want a relationship. They want someone who understands them. They want someone who has their back, has their best interest. And it takes the authenticity and vulnerability for them to build that, that type, this specific like archetype of a relationship, so to speak with 
the the um, service provider and the client. Absolutely, because the information's on the internet. Right. If that's really what people wanted, they would just go and research, totally. get the information, totally. and try. What they're wanting is the personality of the person they're coming to. They want to belong. They want to mm. know that they're not just accepted, which is sort of like low level, totally, and not necessarily embraced, but that the person they're working with is like a friend. They're honored. They're revered. There's somebody who's desired. Mm. And when you act in a very transactional way, looking only at profit, it's really difficult to communicate that you're interested in honoring somebody, revering them, or having them as a friend. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I think that's something that we could all put up on our on our wall is I revere and, and honor my clients and potential clients. You know, like imagine if everyone walked around like that or operated like that thinking of of our clients and our customers and putting them first and saying, what do they want? You know, like when we're when we're when we're laying in bed at night, what is it? What is it that Sally Joe wants? Like, what, is, what does she want? And that just, like, keeps us up at night. Wouldn't it be awesome if everyone is walking around like that? <laughs> Absolutely. It would change a lot of paradigms. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so this authenticity and vulnerability, how do, we, how do we start tapping into that? How do we share that? How do we practice it? Is it something that we can master? Is it... Is it, you know, not untamable? Is it, is it going to be wild and uncontrollable? Like, how do we start diving into that, into those two topics? I think that story has a lot to do with it. Okay. I think that uh, being in a community, even as you are the one looking to create a community, to be in a mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. so people can call you on your BS and help you when you forgot who you really are. That's right. Um, but also where you can practice and share your gifts and push the envelope a little bit. So um, I think that one thing is being in a community that is of like-minded people, much like you're creating, where people are committed to improving where they're at and who they are. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing is working a lot with story. And when we do that, to realize uh, it's story out of service. Mm -hmm. So if the story is all about us, it's not in service. It's looking for wow. where we use our story to assist somebody else to get a different um, viewpoint, a paradigm, um, or to give them some insights that they didn't have. And so I think, you know, a lot of people look at story like the hero's journey, and that's a great story paradigm. Mm -hmm. um, and I would offer that it's also needing an update. And so what yeah. we forget as we're telling our stories um, is first and foremost, it's not all about us. It's actually about our audience. And mm. a lot of people are talking about that now, that we need to tell stories realizing like, we're the sort of foil for our audience. Um, but the easiest way to do that is to look mm. for compassion points. Where is it that our audience most needs to see we get them in their journey and where mm -hmm. in our journey can it show that we do in fact get them. And so it's mm. looking for the compassion points, I think, in the what, story to share with people. What would some of those be? What would be an example of compassion points? Well, for instance, let's take a situation of a podcaster cool. who's reaching out to um, other individuals. Mm -hmm. um, the podcaster has gone on a journey and the journey is to master a certain topic mm -hmm. and to invite better conversation and connection. Um, you can't do a podcast and have any success with it if you're not doing those two things. Mm. Um, people are coming to listen because they also want connection and probably are gaining information so that they can ask better questions as well. Mm. Um, so when a podcaster uh, gets on and tells a little bit about their journey and shares, uh, were they always naturally gifted at asking questions? Uh, did they stumble through some interviews? What are some of their shining moments? But what are some of the moments where it's like everything went horribly wrong? Mm. And then what did they do with that? Mm. Those show the same thing that's going on in the listener's mind. Oh, the podcaster is really good at asking questions. I'm not sure I'm ever going to be that good oh, the podcaster has a unique ability to get really interesting people and connect. Oh, I'm not that good at it. Mm. 
Mm. Oh, the podcaster has this wealth of information and interest. And you know, I'm still at the shorter stage of doing that. Mm. How can I get all of this wealth and know all these people and connect? And so when we share our stories and we are mindful of what our audience experience is and we are willing to be authentic and vulnerable in what we're sharing, mm -hmm. it automatically makes us connect in a deeper, more profound way. Wow. Incredible. Incredible. So it's that the points of, of pain, right, or, or the aspirations that, that our target audience might have. It's just being able to understand them. And is there a specific type of, of market research that you recommend or way to go about finding out what these are? These, is, it, is it just looking at our own journey? Is that the, your, your preferred way of finding out where did I struggle? And as, as long as our clients and customers are us a few steps behind, so to speak, then that, that works. Is that your preferred way to, to figure out how to market to them effectively, how to speak their language, how to really connect? That's one way, but I wouldn't use that um, only. And so okay. one thing that I would also do is uh, go look at the blog posting um, and the Facebook page mm -hmm. postings or group postings for competitors and mm -hmm. look at what people are saying. So as an example, um, one part of my story is that uh, when I was uh, pursuing the orchestra position, Mm -hmm. um, I was going to university and I was studying music theory and conducting in college. And um, I ended up going to two universities at the same time, full time. Wow. Now, I could tell you a story about that, <laughs> but likely most people haven't done that. Mm -mm. And so that even though that might be a, a struggle or a journey that I had, if most people don't relate to it, my sharing it in and of mm. itself, without any other context, doesn't connect us. Oh. However, if I look at that and I find where is the point of connection, the point of connection is I was pursuing a degree to become an orchestra conductor. My parents didn't think I was going to be able to get a job on graduation. And so mm. they said to me, hey, why don't you minor in something useful? something mm. you can get a job on on graduation. So a lot of people have that experience. They go through college and their parents wish they would have gone into something else when they experience mm. that. Um, and there's the irony of my story. When most people listen to it, the part they can't relate to is two universities, same time, full time. And mm. that sort of labels me. Right. And the shift is my second degree, the one that I got trying to appease my parents, <laughs> looking to do something where I could get a job on graduation was German literature. <laughs> and so, you know, like there's no way that was leading towards a job. That was my youthful stubbornness of I'm not giving up the dream of orchestra conducting and German <laughs> literature will get me a, a job in an opera house. Right. Wow. And because you laughed, right. And most people do. It's yeah. that irony of, well, maybe she didn't have it all together <laughs> after all, you know, <laughs> the silliness of it is yeah. what helps us feel closer to. So our yeah. quirks mm. um, in juxtaposition to our successes also yeah. can really help bring about a vulnerability of a different kind. Wow. How do you, how do you piece it all together in a story and share it at the right time effectively? How does that all work? Well, just like if I invited you over in the beginning stages, you know a little bit about me enough to come over and I know a little bit about you in order to invite you, but we haven't told like the full thing. Mm. Um, we don't know every aspect of each other. And that's a really good thing. It's, um, it's a kind of a dance where people get to know each other. Mm -hmm. Too often online, people do the quick dump. Here are the five highlights of my life. I'm mm -hmm. not going to tell you any of the emotion around them. I'm just going to give you the timeline in and out and I'm going to pretend that makes it all okay. And then I'm never, ever going to tell you anything different about me again. And that's not how normal relationships work. It's like, you know, in a conversation I had with somebody who I've known for 25 years, I learned a new fact that I never knew wow. before. Wow. That keeps my interest. It keeps me excited. It lets me see 
they're actually multidimensional. They're not just like one person with five things on a timeline. <laughs> um, so it's revealing something that's appropriate for where we are in the relationship. If it's the first time you're getting to know me, hmm. maybe a couple of snippets are really important and the hmm. timeline thing's a little okay. But also remember to put a piece of emotion in it. If you're not connecting with me on an emotional level, we're actually not connecting. You're just wow. learning more information. And then the closer we get to working with each other and the, the more expansive that is, mm. provide more and more and more information because you would in a regular relationship. Mm. The, the more you deepen the relationship, the more you learn, the more safety there is, the more sharing there is. And just handle it the same way. Wow. That's incredible. I, I love that it's, it's, you said reveal what's appropriate something that's important and it's appropriate for that time, for that conversation. And I think there's so many media channels and email, social media, texting, all these different ways that we can reach people, different platforms. There's an opportunity to share a little piece of us all over, all the time. Like we can be sharing little bits and pieces of us. Like I know for me, I'm on here for 12 hours straight. So it has to come out like parts and pieces of my story over the course of a, a day that people get to to have access to it, which I think is really cool and, and makes me super relatable. Obviously not everyone's going to be here all 12 hours, but like just because I'm being me and I'm showing up and, and throughout these interviews, I, chime in and, and, uh, you know, share my own experience at, at times as well. Like that is something that, that builds the relationship with the audience too. Absolutely. And the, the other thing too, is you come across, whether it's natural, or you work at it really warm and mm. friendly. And so in a, you know, in, in listening or watching, you get a sense of who you actually really deeply are mm. And most people's stuff online, even if it's a video or it's something in writing, you don't get that warmth. And it's mm. the warmth we want. And it's the warmth, you know, yeah, um, the, the credibility aspects are important, but we're mm. all presuming that if we're going to somebody, there's an, they're an expert. Yeah. And so it's really, um, you can get turned off by somebody really quickly if you mm. don't feel that warmth coming through. And so when you bring in some emotion, you can really see what the person's about and you can connect in a deeper way more quickly, but also more sustainably. Mm. You know, how many times do we have in real life, not online life, we have a friend and we're bonded with them and then they do something stupid or it rubs us the wrong way or it pushes a trigger or whatever. Mm -hmm. Most of us don't on the first instance say, okay, that's it. I'm never going, I'm never going to connect right, with them again. Right, right. But if you're truly, purely transactional, the first time you get mm. that email of the, you know, 15th sale offer, you know, it's like, okay, I'm unsubscribing because mm. there's no relationship. There's no warmth. They haven't gotten to know the person. Mm. Wow. So it sounds like what you said there is in emails, we, for example, if, if something is purely informational, whether it's Facebook live, whether it's email, whatever, then they're more likely to just disconnect because they haven't built that emotional bond yet because people haven't put in parts of their story or if they did put in parts of their story, it didn't resonate with the, the audience member. It didn't connect. It, it wasn't about them. It was about the person who was sending it or it just didn't relate to their, their challenges or their what they aspire to. Right, exactly. Like right now, we've gotten a lot of emails, most of us, Mm -hmm. um, people who are updating their privacy policies and terms and conditions for the GDPR. Mm -hmm. And so few of them start out with any reveal. And it only takes like a line or two, like, hey, I was worried about this, or you? <laughs> <laughs> or are you tired of getting this stuff too? <laughs> I don't mean to add to it, but you know, just like something that shows like we get mm -hmm. what it's like to be the recipient of 200 of these kind of emails yeah. and we honor the person who's receiving it. It just really, it takes a line or two to be able to drop into actually being a person. Wow. Wow. That's, that's awesome. Let's talk about that. Like to, to actually being a person, is there anything else that we might be missing about, Hey, this is a human that we're dealing with here or anything that we could introduce and focus on and make sure we prioritize that, hey, this is a human that we're relating to, speaking to, selling to, building a relationship with, connecting, anything you have 
recommendations around that? Yes, absolutely. Uh, much like I was talking about in reputation management, mm -hmm. reach out to people. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the coolest things, uh, particularly with you, is I got to talk with you ahead of time. Yes. Um, that's actually not happened with a lot of people. Oh. And so what ends up happening is we can build a relationship first. Yes. Um, and so in your own work, not, not necessarily you, but all the listeners, mm -hmm. where can you do that too? Is it on Facebook? Is it in a blog post? If you're sending out emails, are you actually inviting people to respond? And if they do, do you respond back? Um, I've been astounded by the people who don't, mm. but even more astounded by the people who do. Because what mm. that shows is I'm not just some number and their autoresponder, no. that they actually care and want to really make connection. And somebody who does that, I'll go through a lot more of their, hey, buy this affiliate offer, or hey, mm. do this, or even the mistake mm. that happens. Because I know they cared about me enough to not just treat me like, I'm only mm. good for the sale and past that. Yeah. Forget it. Yeah. What's a what's a practice that people can develop or you know I'm trying to like take this from okay it's a great concept how do we take action on on it and effectively implement is there you know for for me I think of time blocking do we set aside a certain amount of time is there you know a certain thing that we do in our process our business our systems to be able to be effective with this. Yeah, I I definitely think that's a great uh, pattern to uh, look to adopt. So, right. so one thing is just remembering and being aware to do it. Okay. And then the second thing is, um, what do you need to do that? So you can use the, if then, mm -hmm. if this, then that kind mm -hmm. of thing, set up reminders or set up reminders on your phone. Mm -hmm. You know, have you, have you talked like a person lately? Um, <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, a, a reminder that comes up every once in a while. So you remember to do it. Time blocking is a really uh, good thing. But the other thing is um, just, you know, acknowledge the elephant in the room. If you're um, on Facebook, on your website, in an email, wherever you're reaching out to people, on a podcast, anywhere, um, say the obvious. I want to mm. connect with each and every one of you, but mm. the numbers prevent me from doing so. Um, mm. Reach out to me. It'll take me a little while to get back to you because I'm a human, um, but I will. Mm. So give me some time and space and I'll honor you with the same thing. Just reach out. And so put it in where you're connecting with people so that they know, um, which is the same thing. You know, if you had a friend call and you didn't have time to talk with them, probably you wouldn't ignore them for three weeks. You would probably <laughs> text them to say, hey, I'm swamped right now. Um, is, is this like critical like <laughs> yes. balance or, you know, like, can you wait a couple of days so I can, you know, come up for air? Yeah. And just like. Same thing, like use the same social skills you would have with a friend, do it mm. online, do it in your writing, do it in your email. Well, I'm, I'm curious because this, this brings up a great point in today's more so disconnected world where people don't have necessarily the manners, the habits, the inspiration, the excitement to connect with, with others or, you know, that I'm sure like in their subconscious they have it, but maybe they, it's still more of a foreign concept to them to, to step into that being that paradigm of, I love connecting with people like, yes, we can remind them, but, and is there a fundamental shift or a new perspective or a new story that they can tell themselves about how they do business to make them more effective in their business and in life? Absolutely. Um, so one thing I, I want to disavow people of is that you have to constantly be on, mm. you know, there's, there's some people who think that that means that they have to respond to every post and every person's comment. And it's just not humanly possible. But for some people, they're also more introverted. They may have a very extroverted persona in aspects. I'm mm -hmm. really extroverted when I'm teaching. Yeah. But normally I'm, I'm not. I'm actually far more introverted. So acknowledging that also is a good thing to do because then people say, oh, well, you know, if she's not there talking all the time. Mm. Yeah, She's already shared an aspect of her. She was vulnerable and said, you know, um, I, I struggle with that. But maybe in building a tribe, maybe it would be smart for me to get somebody who is more extroverted who can help me do that. Not mm. pretending to be me, but saying, hey, this is a community. I recognize this is so important. 
and I'm not always the most gifted in doing it. So mm. I'm going to share this and I invite you to take ownership of it too. be part of the community that helps us go forward. That's one thing. Wow. The other thing I think most of us aren't aware of where we fall short in the connection realm. We think we're doing things, but we're actually not. We forget mm. that whether it's social media or the particular branding of television to movies to Netflix, that when we get bored, we walk away. Something's coming on, it's commercial, we want something to drink, we leave. Totally. And we forget we are unaware with doing that in our relationships too. Dang. Somebody is a little difficult, they're hard, they're whining one too many times and we're multitasking, we're out of there, we're not listening. And when it's our customers or our clients or our tribe, we do the exact same thing. Wow. So speak to the elephant in the room. You know what? Hey, sometimes I forget. And I do the online equivalent of getting up and going to the refrigerator. And when I do, <laughs> gently, nudge me on it don't call me on it nudge me on it because mm. we do that if we were in a relationship i'd say mm. hey you know it's been three weeks since you returned my call like come on like where we go let's go out for coffee or something right so d interact the same way and invite the same thing one of the things i love doing is when someone sends me a message and i don't respond because it's bound to happen ladies and gentlemen if it hasn't happened you need to play at a bigger level <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things I love doing is if someone reminds me that they sent me a message and they say, Hey, did you see my message? I say, thank you so much for reminding me. I appreciate you taking the time to do that because like I, I, I value our relationship. I value this connection and sometimes things do slip through the cracks. So thank you for doing that, you know, and just really, really thanking them. So you have that energy of empowerment when people do that for you, when, when like, it's good to have a lot of people want your attention and want your time. That means you're doing things right. It means you're, you're kicking butt, taking names and growing and people want to be a part of, of who you are and what you're doing. So if you feel shame around when people send you a message and then they have to resend you a message, you're just shooting yourself in the foot because you don't have to feel any negative feelings. It's not like you said, oh, I'm not going to respond to that. And in three weeks, they're going to message me again. And then, oh, and then I'll feel like crap. No, it's like you, you did your best and there's no reason that you, you have to you know, bring yourself down at all. You say, thank you so much for reminding me. And I promise to do my best and do better all the time to respond to these faster. So that, that's that's my personal approach to that because I, I used to get super ashamed and super, super guilty and have a lot of negative energy around those un, un, uncompleted communications and, and unresolved and and, uh, and not responded to. And so something I've been doing in my own paradigm to shift it is just saying thank you and I'll do my best and keep moving forward. Absolutely. There's, there's not any of us who are staying up in the middle of the night thinking, oh, how am I going to really <laughs> hurt my constituents, you know? Like, we're just not doing it. But what we're also not doing is in the same way that you talked about time blocking. Mm. We're not effectively managing our time. We think connection has to be one-on-one-on-one, -on -one -on -one, and, mm. and sometimes it does. But it's also like, can we once a month have a Facebook Live or mm. open Q&A where we say, hey, tribe, you know, I'm, I've been missing you. I've mm. been swamped. I haven't been able to get back to you one on one. And so I'm going to hold a live on such and such a date at such and such a time. Mm. Please join me. I'd love to connect with you there. Mm. I'll miss you. You know, so yeah. what, what the people want to know is that they matter. Yeah. And everybody understands busy. So mm. it's just a matter of, again, like, are you willing to speak to the elephant in the room and create something that's a win-win for everybody mm. and at least show you're willing to make the effort? And doing that even like once a month, it is a huge benefit to people. Wow. That's amazing. Amazing. Okay. So we have a few minutes left. Is there any other powerful solutions, strategies, things that you really wanted our audience to receive from today to, to leverage themselves, to really connect anything else that you got? I know you got oceans to give and <laughs> um, optimize that yeah. connection. <laughs> yeah. I, I would say one other thing. Um, if you're networking at all, so mm. we're always networking. Sometimes we call it meetups. Sometimes we call it getting together for coffee. But we're always networking. Um, when we are someplace where other people can meet with us, do we post it anywhere? 
Mm. Um, if we're going to an event, do we say ahead of time, hey, like you would if you were friends, right? Mm. Hey, I'm going to be at such and such event. Come meet me the night before at the bar. I'd love to meet with you. Or mm. uh, I'm going to go to the local meetup. You want to come? Like, mm. just like you would if you were going to hang out somewhere and you wanted to invite all your friends who you knew were going to be available. We don't do that. And it's a huge opportunity that we miss. Mm. Um, so I'd really recommend doing that. And, and what, I, what's the best platforms or channels to do that through? Would you recommend in, in what scale? I would do it at whatever place you are showing up to talk with your audience. And I would do it at uh, whatever scale the event space can handle. Mm. So, um, you know, just like you might do with, hey, I'm having a barbecue. If you're open to coming over, like meet me. Mm. Uh, but let me know ahead of time because I need to have enough <laughs> right, right. Of food to cook, right? right. Uh, same thing. I'm going to be at such and such an event. If you're open to hooking up with me at the bar, text me. If I get yeah. too many places or, you know, send me a message online or Facebook, like however you want to do it. Right. Um, and if there's too many, we'll move to a new location, but let me know. Mm. Mm. So like there, I think there actually cannot be too big because if you knew there were going to be whatever the number is, a hundred, a thousand right. coming to meet you, you just go run a room. Totally. Know, right? Totally. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> I love it. Have our own party. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> I love it. Okay, cool, cool. So the in person is is critical. What other uh, we didn't get to that a whole whole lot, but what other ways can we connect more effectively in person? What have you seen works for that? A uh, couple of things. So one thing is um, when I go to events, mm -hmm. um, I don't bring a regular business card. Um, mm. I have found that they get lost and thrown away a lot. So I bring mm -hmm. a postcard. And on the postcard, um, I speak to whatever is really going on. So, for right. instance, it normally is something about um, something funny on the front because mm -hmm. people remember funny better. Right. And uh, then say something like, what, you're not on my speed dial? Like, we got to change that. And then on the <laughs> flip side, uh, give a website page that they could go to that's specific for the event. Awesome. Um, and a stealth thing, if you're way too swamped or you're new and you haven't gotten the knack yet of putting up a page every time you go somewhere, mm -hmm. um, put up one page that's dedicated to when people first meet you. Mm. And you can always change, like give a lead magnet there. Yep. You can always change the lead magnet for every event, but the page can stay the same. Mm. What would you uh, recommend so is on, on that page? Welcome. I'm so glad to meet you. <laughs> if, um, if I was having you over for coffee, I would give you something to drink but because we're not able to do that. I've done my own version of a welcome gift or goodie wow. bag. Here it wow. is. Wow. That's gold. That's some, that's some gold copy right there. <laughs> that's awesome. Very cool. Very cool. So yes, yeah, it's, it's just the simple, you know, how would you do it if you were in person? Hey, welcome, welcome to the house. Do you want do you want something? Here, here's what I have. And it's just like that same philosophy in psychology and online. I'm sure we gotta be a little bit more direct. Here is your next step or a couple choices for your next steps, depending on how you wanna interact with me, what kind of value you wanna get, what we talked about at the event, if you wanna schedule a call, if you want to join my tribe, if you want to hear my, about my podcast or whatever people's offerings are. So I'm sure that de depends on the person. Yeah, another really stealth thing to do is, of course, first, get it up. So whatever you can get up, get up. Yep. Um, I tend to be a, you know, a little more formal, so don't, <laughs> I don't have the sort of like badassery aspect. But like, <laughs> leverage your personality in it. If, if you use a particular language or particular style, mm. if you're harder, if you're softer, if you're woo-woo, whatever you are, let it be seen on that welcome page. Mm. And if you're really taking it up a notch or two, um, give a three-part choice. So there's going to always be those people who uh, totally get what you're about, those people who are not necessarily so interested, they're just exploring, mm. and those people who are waiting to be proven right or wrong, right? <laughs> so give them, give them the three doors. Like, if this is you, click here. 
if this is you <laughs> click here if this is you click here mm. and again don't ask for an email just give it free mm. and then on that page give something where if they want to take it further they can give you an email in exchange for something else mm. wow that's gold I that love lets this. them pick their journey and it lets them get to know you and they give a snippet of who you really are based on the attitude you present on the welcome page. Mm, wow. And I know you, I noticed you did this for, for the show. You know, we have your website, uh, Karen Olson agency.com forward slash be your GPS. So you created a page or at least, you know, had, had the page route through, through this link, um, for this show. So it's, you're totally walking the talk. I love it. I love it. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, cool. So we're wrapping it up. Final takeaways, things you want to drive home, calls to action for the entrepreneur, solopreneur, author, speaker, coacher who is in coach and who is in the audience right now. What what's what is the the step up, the next level that they can become by by shifting their paradigm? I think embrace becoming aware. Mm. Look at where you can own your involvement in your client or customer's experience. Mm. Um, sort through what you want and what you're willing to do. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, realize what effort it takes to do 2% or 5% or 10% more mm. is actually the same amount of effort to do wildly crazy more. Mm. Um, so, it's a matter of just like you said, like time blocking, system creation and planning. So if you can't handle creating a welcome page for every single event, create the best one you possibly can, make it awe people when they come to it and, and just like leverage it. And then the next time you can up level how you're gonna do the next page that you do. Wow. Amazing, amazing. We received that, we hear it loud and clear. And Karin, how do people take the next step and stay connected with you? Well, so that I walk my talk, reach <laughs> out to me, actually send me an email at Corinne at okay. CorinneOlsonAgency.com and I will respond. It'll be me, it won't be a team member. It will take me some time in order to reach out because I get quite a few emails every day, but I do respond, so you can do that. Um, I'm also on Facebook at, uh, at, if you type in the words, it's create amazing content, but if you're searching through the URL, it's the Corinne Olson agency. So All either right. one of those work. And then awesome. definitely come visit uh, the webpage that I put up, um, where there will be a free gift with no opt-in required. Woohoo! I love it. I love it. Awesome. And then what else can we look forward to you to from you uh, in the coming years, coming months and coming years? Um, hopefully a whole lot. So I'm going to be uh, speaking on stage, which is my passion and teaching. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love mm -hmm. um, the agency is doing some reputation management work and uh, lead magnets. And cool. um, I'm looking to shift the paradigm and do burst masterminds and burst do it together workshops, recognizing that most people don't want to commit for a year. Mm. Um, and so we're going to do some bursts to get it done together because wow. adults do more together. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You are a superstar and I appreciate your, your poise, your, how you show up and just deliver who you are with full connection, full presence and awareness. Corinne, you are, are just Amazing. Thank you so much for showing up today 100% and giving our audience the gold. And everyone, definitely stay connected with this woman. Go go to that page, CorinneOlsonAgency.com forward slash be your GPS. And I dropped it in the comments. It'll be in the show notes. All that good stuff. Boom. So thank you so much for showing up, Corinne. And we will see you very soon, okay? Thank you. I deeply appreciate it. Awesome. Take care. <laughs>